Hello and welcome back to Multidimensional Integration, the video series where we learn how to solve integrals in Rn. And indeed, in today's part 5, we will talk about the substitution rule in higher dimensions. Usually it's known as the change of variables formula, because one can see this calculation as changing the coordinate system. In the end, it's not a complicated formula, but very useful in applications. Now before we explain this important formula, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget, as a supporter you have access to a lot of additional material like quizzes, PDF versions and my books. You can just download everything with the link in the description. Ok, then let's start with a function f defined on Rn. Or more precisely here it should be defined on an open subset u in Rn. And moreover it should be a measurable map with respect to our ordinary Lebesgue sigma algebra. Please note we consider an open set for the domain to make the description a little bit simpler. It's not a big restriction and we can definitely generalize that later. However, first let's focus on what we actually want, namely we want to solve an integral. Namely the n-dimensional integral of the function f. And you know one possible notation we chose for that would be integral of f and d n x inside. Which simply means that we have n variables which we put into one vector x. And now the change of variables formula will tell us that we can introduce a new variable, but still get out the same integral value in the end. For this let's make a sketch where we have u on the left hand side. Naturally it's helpful to keep the picture two dimensional, but of course it still represents the n dimensional one. Therefore here we could find our set u in Rn. And now one idea here could be to transform this u into a better shape. In this sense we will find a second coordinate system here on the right hand side. And in order to keep it simple let's call the variables x tilde. And then let's assume that the new shape of u in this coordinate system is much nicer. Indeed this could be one reason why we want to do this change of variables. So we get a second open set in Rn and we call this one u tilde. And obviously it would also be nice to have a bijection here, so we can go back and forth between u and u tilde. In fact, the best case for our calculation rule would be to have a diffeomorphism between them. And this one I want to denote by capital phi. Hence phi maps u tilde into u. So please note, we have an n-dimensional input and an n-dimensional output and we want that the map is continuously differentiable. And now to make this into a diffeomorphism, we need that the inverse exists, so we need a bijective map and then this inverse should also be continuously differentiable. Hence phi inverse is now a map from u into u tilde. More precisely, what we have here is what we call a C1 diffeomorphism. If you want to know more about diffeomorphisms, I discussed them in my multivariable calculus series in part 21. Ok, and now here what you should see is that we want to use this function phi as a substitution in our integral. Which means instead of x we want to write phi of x tilde. This is the whole idea, this is the change of variables we want to do. And there we already know how it works in one dimension because there is a nice mnemonic to remember it. Namely the dx in the integral becomes a derivative times dx tilde. More concretely we have the derivative of phi at x tilde times dx tilde. And there is a nice way to remember this when you say that the derivative of phi is simply dx over dx tilde. And then in the next step you put both things into the integral and you have the whole substitution formula. 
And it turns out it works exactly the same way in higher dimensions. The only thing we have to keep in mind is that the derivative of phi is more complicated in higher dimensions. But as you already know, we can use the so-called Jacobian as a replacement. And there the common notation is to write j with index phi. And then we also evaluate that at the point x tilde. And this is already almost the substitution as we want it. The only problem is it does not make sense. You see this because we have an n times n matrix here, but we want to integrate a one-dimensional real-valued function in the end. Therefore, the actual thing that comes into this change of variables formula is not the Jacobian itself, but just the determinant. And moreover, since our n-dimensional integral has no orientation, we also have to add the absolute value here. And that's it. This is how you can remember the formula for calculating an integral while changing the coordinates with a function phi. And you already know, this is what we call the change of variables formula in n dimensions. Hence, for calculating the integral of f over the set u, we can also integrate another function over the set u tilde. And this other function you simply get by substituting x in the way we showed above. This means inside the function f, we put the function phi of x tilde, and instead of d and x, we have the absolute value of the determinant of the Jacobian of phi times d and x tilde. So this is the whole formula, and it tells us how we can switch between the two variables x and x tilde. In fact, in order to make the whole formula clearer, we can also write the image of u tilde under phi for the first integral. Obviously, this is the same as u, but now we have phi on both sides in the formula. So you can remember, from this image here, we push phi into the integral. Moreover, one important claim of this change of variables formula is, if one integral exists, then also the other. This means for applications, you can always apply this formula for a measurable function f. Under this transformation, the value of the integral stays the same. Most importantly, you can apply it in the one direction or the other regarding which side is simpler for your particular problem. This means that the domain could be much simpler on one side or even the function is much easier to integrate on one side. Of course, the function on the right-hand side looks more complicated in this formula, but for some cases the combination of f and phi could be very simple. In other words, the crucial thing for solving a given integral could be finding a suitable function phi for applying the change of variables formula. And I would say I can present you that with examples in the next video. So I really hope we meet there again and have a nice day. Bye-bye.